Hey, today we're gonna do a quick video. We're gonna make some belt buckles, but cool sci-fi custom insignia belt buckles. <laughs> we're gonna make a nice one and a messed up one. Let's go. <laughs> How's it going? Anthony Fro here, Crate Sci-Fi. Uh, today's fun. Today's going to be like a quick build, but something really cool. Um, I'm working on a new film, and as always when I'm working on a new film, I always procrastinate by building props before I even finish writing. <laughs> so now with the 3D printer and the Tinkercad, I wanted to do something real quick. So these are custom belt buckles that have the insignia um, of the protagonist, right? So the protagonist is a member of some organization or something. I don't wanna to give too much away. And just these little things, now that I have the 3D printer, I'm just experimenting with quick little things that I can do just to add value, right? Low cost, high impact. And these print really quick. And it's just one of those little things where, you know, before I go to the thrift store, get a belt, weather it, this is just one of those things you'll never focus on it in the film, but subconsciously, right, it adds a lot. And they're just fun to make. <laughs> Even if it's for like cosplay, costume, or just day to day, right? If you want to put like your favorite little logo on there. So um, pretty straightforward, pretty quick, um, fun, I think. Fun for the whole family. <laughs> All right, so let's hop into Tinkercad first. All right, sorry, no, first we gotta go to Thingiverse and we gotta find this buckle. Um, I listed where you could find it if you wanna play along. And now we're gonna add the logo. This is a really cool thing I found. So you take any logo or text, you go to this online place to convert it for free into Vector. How amazing is that? And then Vectors you can bring into Tinkercad. So now we're in Tinkercad, here's our model. Um, the only thing different is I need to flip it around because I wanted to print that logo on the top, not on the plate. So there I'm bringing in that um, logo that I just did for free online there. Um, bing, bang, boom. <laughs> and now I'm just arranging this on my buckle. And what you do is you change that into a hole. And then what that does is it uh, removes, right? It makes it negative. Now we have a buckle with a cool logo. Um, now I'm just sort of unifying everything, getting it ready for printing, and then now I'm gonna bring it over to um, the flash print, right? The slicing software. And I go into slicing software in more detail in my printing videos. So here I'm just, uh, um, you know, adding supports, setting my temperatures, you know, 3D printing is a little like cooking. And then there I see my layers at work and I'm gonna send that over to the printer. <laughs> printer time lapse, dum dum dum. And like that, boom, in a minute, <laughs> which really that took about two days. So here we go, now the build. So online I bought that belt strap. Um, I have two of these because I figured I'll try two different versions and you know, they're pretty small This is a fun easy print. So I was able to print two of them at once. No big deal. So why not? First thing I'm doing is uh, cleaning out all the support material, right? That's part of 3d printing support material clean up sanding, right? You know, I'm in the future. I'm 3d printing and I'm still sanding <laughs> So you know the drill, got the sanding sticks, gonna use the emery boards and the steel wool. But yeah, now we're just test fitting everything and I have my sandpapers. Now we're just prepping for paint, right? So we have our buckle that we printed. I'm just sanding it, getting it ready for paint, getting rid of any sort of like loose ends from the printing. Sometimes you get like little um, like plastic hairs almost, right? So I'm just tightening everything up did the uh, emery cloth, the steel wool, and then now with some isopropyl alcohol, uh, cleaning it up. I don't know if I always take this for granted, but isopropyl alcohol, why we use that is, it just evaporates right away, right? So if I did that with water, I'd have to put it aside, wait for it to dry, maybe in a corner or something, there'd still be water and that would mess up your paint. But with the alcohol, the reason we do that is it evaporates, right? If you knew that, you knew that. If you didn't, tip of the day. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just taping these onto some cardboard so I can paint them. And I like to use this uh, Rust-Oleum Ultra cover because it's a primer and a paint, and when I put it on thick, it helps to cover up the printer lines, right? 
So now I have my base. Um, I let that dry uh, like 24 hours. And now I'm gonna try two different things. Now this is a journey we're about to go on. So the first idea I have is, oh, I'm just gonna do like a metallic dry brush, maybe green, right? Cause I always do blue and red and silver. So let's mix it up. And then I'm thinking, oh, okay. Let me just add a heavier coat inside of this logo, right? So like I said, we're about to go on a process journey here. So I do that and then I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm being inspired. Now keep in mind, this is the first thing that I'm trying. I'm like, let me add some silver. And then I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay. But in the back of my head, I'm like, uh, this is terrible. So now I'm gonna start from zero. So here's some cool car paint that I have from another project. I'm like, yeah, let's paint it down. I'm like, that looks good. So then this idea is like, yeah, some gold rub and buff to, to pop the details. That's gonna be great. <laughs> As you'll see, this becomes a whole thing too. What, what I'm wrestling with here is, it's just a little too rustic, right? A little too messy. You guys know that I love it dirty. I, I like it to be all screwed up, but it's just, there's a difference between weathered, screwed up, and just looks bad, right? So now I'm like, okay, let's just cover the whole thing in gold. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work. So back to the drawing board. So then I erase that, and here I'm trying to convince myself, oh, that looks good. You know, it just looks like the paint chipped off. Maybe that works. And then I'm like, no, no, no. So I cover the whole thing in gold. Now it's just like in my head, you know, if a lot of you, if you've gone through processes, now it's just making a mess, right? But then here I'm thinking, oh, this is kind of good where I'm just going to take it all off and there's just going to be like little remnants of it. So uh, uh, at this moment, I'm thinking, yeah, that works. Just like little touches of gold. That'll be cool. And then now I have my, my wash. I'm going to do a sludge wash. Now, this is the paint that I use in model making the wash. This has a little bit of paint thinner in it. So I'm not thinking, right? So I'm doing my typical thing and I go to erase the wash and what? <laughs> it erased everything. Wait, what? <laughs> Cause there's paint thinner in it. So, um, now I'm like, Oh, all right. So now I'm just going into my water-based oil paints, right? And I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna really just dirty this up. That's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm like, oh, well, let me, let me do some battle scars, some battle damage. And maybe I'm working out <laughs> some frustration here subconsciously. And then I get out my files and I start to dig at it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now, instead of thinking, right, I think with my hands, I guess. And I'm like, yeah, this is working. This is working. So then I get some brown acrylic paint, right? And I figure, oh, let me, let me really jam some dirt into these crevices. And then that's, now I'm like, okay, okay, okay. We got something here. And then now um, I'm just, just stippling, stippling, stippling with the oil paint, with the acrylic paint just making it dirty. And what I'm doing now is I'm liking the direction it's going. So it's it's a, like a dance. You're like looking at it and you're like, yeah, that's close. Does it need anything else, right? Like salt and pepper. And now I'm like, oh, silver rub and buff because where those gouges are, it would be metallic under there, right? And now I'm like, okay, now it's coming together. Now it's coming together. This I'm starting to like. And then, um, you know, the, the thing is to keep in mind is, hang in there and then now just these little scrapes right and this is the moment where i'm like <laughs> sighing relief and i'm like ah okay that was not easy but now i got something this actually works right it's personal taste maybe you don't like this you like the other thing better but for me i'm like okay and i'm looking at that and i'm like yes much better than that green disaster <laughs> And this is the putting a period on it. Final answer. I hit it with the clear coat. All right. So now this, I just added this. I knew I was going to do. If you follow my channel, you probably figured I was going to do this. This I knew I was going to do. It's the graphite treatment and watch. This is magic. And in one stroke, boom. <laughs> so that other thing was what? Like five minutes. So that was probably a couple hours of my life. This was literally, you know, three minutes and that's beautiful. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Core Geek. Uh, that's the guy who shared that graphite treatment. So cool. All right, so now while the um, weathered one is drying, I'm gonna work on these straps. So first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, I cut them to size and um, just melt the ends there. Now in this one, you know, we're making two. Since I weathered that other buckle, um, you know, got to weather the strap. Otherwise, that would look strange, right? So here, I'm just using a uh, heavy grit sandpaper, some um, Scotch Brite, and I'm just, you know, fraying the ends, making it look weathered. Now, I'm just taking some paint, and I'm just dabbing it on here randomly, some water, just trying to give this a little bit of life, just trying to break it up, the black rubbing in with my thumbs and you know broken record but uh, as i always like to remind you i'm making um objects for film right this is not meant to be cosplay or on a shelf so sometimes if it seems i'm going a little heavy-handed the reality is is that will just barely uh read on film and that's what i want and here that's why i just add the green i found that when i add just like little spots random spots of a color like a green or a blue that always looks good on camera then we just crumple that up let that dry while i get back to um the pretty one right the graphite one <laughs> now when i'm gluing fabric i like to use that e6000 so i have the e6000 and that takes about 24 hours to cure so the super glue is basically just to hold it in place uh, while that E6000 cures. So here I'm just assembling the buckle. You, you pop that on there. Um, it, it press fits really good, but I don't know. I just had super glue because that's how I am. And then here, you know, we printed these pegs and these are the pegs that the, the buckle face is going to pivot on and then, you know, make it a, I'm doing air quotes, <laughs> a belt, right? So just tap that in there and then now pop and then that fits gosh i love 3d printing look at that oh. all right so now here's the weather one right so same process putting in those pins just pressure fitting those in there um i did have to persuade him a little off camera but that was no big deal and then pop and then this strap and then um here's the beauty shots right oh really cool and then uh, you know i'm glad i did the two different versions because it's pretty straightforward so really the fun of it the, the the cool part of it is what you do with sort of that core piece right so here's the two options i'm real happy with that now i have a custom prop for my film oh <laughs> those came out so cool now i knew that one you know, I knew kind of how this was going to turn out and it turned out the way I imagined and I really liked that. But the happy accident was this one. I think this is my favorite. And I'm really glad I, I shared the process with you because, you know, it's it's a process, right? You got to creep up on these things. And then also, um, because this is the first time making these, I'm not going to link to this strap. Uh, next time I do it, I need a thicker. This is like nylon. It's slippery, it's not thick enough, so um, I need to get a, a better strap for these. So this one, uh, I wouldn't recommend, but as far as just building these, this works fine. Now I know this works, I just gotta swap out the strap. But yeah, that's so cool, right? <laughs> Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments. And be sure to check out the merch shop. Today, I don't know if you can see, I'm wearing a Michael Cthulhu shirt. <laughs> Love his channel, right? He builds these giant swords out of metal. But, you know, practicing what I preach, buying the, the merch, the shirts really helps the channel. Well... I'm going to go make more belts, <laughs> more props, because, you know, why write when you can just make the props? <laughs> and remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs> and hold your pants up.